And joining us here today, great to catch up with Jay Debertson, president and CEO of CHS. Jay, always a pleasure, sir. How are you? I'm well, Jesse. Happy to be with you this morning. Thanks for joining me, Jay. We have some exciting things to talk about here today, and we're going to start that off uh, talking about the strong fiscal earnings for 2022 for CHS. And I think before we dive into some of the different sectors, uh, just tell us what some of these top highlights are. I know some really good numbers and some great returns to your farmer owners and cooperative members. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jesse. It was a, it was a terrific year for, at, at CHS. We had uh, record revenues of about uh, $48 billion for the year that ended in, in August 31st. And we had record earnings of $1.7 billion. Uh, so just terrific, terrific results for the whole enterprise. And as you say, we can talk a little bit about some of the, the aspects uh, with, with, within that. And there's really you know, three things, Jesse, that I would point to that really kind of drove that. Uh, one of which is just strong global demands for commodities and for the products that, um, you know, that the people that own CHS uh, grow. And uh, and produce uh, and those opportunities that came with that in this world that's uh, you know that's really uh, going through a lot of change uh, right now. Second thing is I would point to is just very strong support from the local cooperatives and the farmers that own CHS. Really strong support and 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 that came through in their purchases from us and that allowed us then to take advantage of those opportunities. And then the third area that I point to was just really good execution by by my colleagues at CHS in terms of. Uh, uh, executing on a business plan in an environment um, that's just got a lot going on from drought to river issues to Ukraine to um, you know hurricanes that hit us early in the year so just 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 a lot in there yeah it's been a very busy year in agriculture but uh, the ability of CHS to really you know pull in some of those uh, different revenues and then return you know a billion dollars cash to your member cooperatives and farmer owners and i think that just goes to show the the benefits of the cooperative model jay you're abs you absolutely right jesse i mean that this is where the i mean this is how it should work uh, we made a lot of money in the products that that the owners that that of chs need and when we do those profits go right back to them so the board of directors at CHS has announced uh, two components. One is our cash patronage based on the sales we do this year. And the second is uh, redemption of equity that people have in, 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 in CHS. Together, those two numbers added up to be a billion dollars of cash that we are sending out to rural America. Um, and that's, you know, that's how it works. That's where our profits go is out to rural America for farmers and local cooperatives to invest in their communities. Uh, to invest in their operations, uh, to invest in their in, in in production agriculture. So, it's it, frankly it's our honor and it's our responsibility to be able to send that kind of cash right back to rural America. And um, and it's and it's just just one more reflection of a really strong year. Well, Jay, you mentioned a couple of different segments, and I, I want to talk about a few of those as well and get your thoughts there. As uh, you know, we look especially just at the ag segment. I mean, you're thinking about you know continued favorable margins uh, on the crush side, oilseed processing, et cetera. Just some of the margins for for the entire ag segment. Uh, you know, with strong global demand, as you alluded to earlier. Uh, I know that's something that has uh, grown and. It feels like it's going to be a pretty big segment here moving into this next year as well as we continue to watch a lot of different global factors, Jay. Yeah, you're, you're right, Jesse. It, 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 it appears that way going into the next year. Um, you know, I would also say that those of us in agriculture, yourself included, know that, you know, there's going to be some things that come across in the next 12 months that we don't even know about yet. And um, and some of those can be positive and some of those can be headwinds. But that's, you know, that's what we sign up for when we come into mm -hmm. agriculture. Um, but when we look across the platforms of CHS, energy had a really strong year for, 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 for us. And just a lot going on there as as demands return after the pandemic, um, some changes in, in refining capacity uh, in this country and other countries for, for a variety of reasons. And also things like natural gas prices that um, you know, just have tremendous volatility around the world that you know, have kind of carry on impacts on things like fertilizer production and manufacturing and cost of goods for, for, for operations that really are significantly different than they've been in in the past and then in our egg sector you know you, you point out uh, soybean crush um, 
has just got a whole lot going on within that industry right now due to things like renewable diesel, uh, strong demands for meal based on livestock, uh, and a world that continues to want to eat better. And, um, and that, plus our, our global grain marketing um, business, uh, just really, really nice results in, in that. And, 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 and frankly, I think a lot of those attributes look to stay with us um, going forward. But, but like, um, like I said, you know, we had a war that started in Ukraine, um, you know, last February. Uh, as we began this fiscal year that we just closed, we didn't see that coming. Uh, and, uh, and so that's, that's an example of, you know, just things that can happen in the course of time that you just, you just, you have going to have to react to. Well, you maybe think of something uh, here, Jay, as well, you know, you brought up that, uh, the, with the Ukraine war, we didn't see that coming. So learning maybe from that, how does a company such as CHS maybe prepare for some of that unexpected now moving forward? So I think the ways that, you know, the, the things that we, we, we do is, um, you know, we, first of all, that kind of uncertainty is kind of baked into our culture. We, um, <clears throat> when we get on the right side of things, we don't think we're necessarily the smartest people in the room. We understand that this things can go both ways. And, and so therefore, you know, keep our keep our ear to the ground, uh, stay nimble, understand our risk, know where we've got exposure, keep our risk tolerances where we where we want them to be, um, and and kind of go about business in you know I'll call it a block and tackling way as opposed to you know thinking you've just got it all figured out, uh, and, and and that serves CHS well for 95 years. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I think that's how companies get to be 95 years old is, is they, you know, stay humble. Um, they watch their risk, risk levels. And, um, and, and, if, and if things go against them, they react as quickly as they can to get it reset. Uh, and when opportunities present themselves, we also capitalize on it. Well, Jay, before we run out of time, anything else you want to mention here today or reiterate again, just very strong earnings for the fiscal year and uh, just really continued uh, great success with CHS. It, it really is, Jesse, and we're very thankful for the support we get from from rural America uh, uh, and at CHS and um, and we work hard to earn it. Well, Jay, always a pleasure to catch up with you, sir. I know we'll be talking to you again real soon, but enjoy the rest of your day, and we will uh, get you back on the program here in short order. Jay, have a great one. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jesse.